to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. Here we are again. It is, wait, what is it? Saturday night. We are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. Uh, we are back. I am joined tonight by Mr. Kevin Tarver. Hey! And Mr. Mark. That's me. And Mark has a last name too, and I just lost it for a minute. I forgot what it was. It's, yeah. It's Mark. It's you don't one want of the, your name out there, man. One of the former saint, you know, like the popes, one of those, yeah, one of those guys. I, so you're a pope? Well. You're the pope now? Saint, you know, Saint Benedict. So when they chose you, they sent that cloud, that smoke signal? I, I don't know. I'm not Catholic, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how are you guys doing tonight? I don't know how they do that. Uh, I'm here. You're here. I'm here, here fighting the cold. I was bringing some handguns, you know, we were going to try some stuff. And, uh, yeah, it, it's dark at like 5 o'clock. It is dark. So, so we're I gonna, didn't. We're going to hit this up. You're on vacation for the next few weeks. Possibly. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and get this taken care of. Uh, A lot of changes at work lately. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, that's work stuff. We don't talk about work stuff okay. in the freaking war room. Okay. That's why there's spiders crawling around everywhere in here. Mr. Keep Mark. us on our toes. That's part of the training. <laughs> <That's>, mm. <laughs> Is this like a training room then? It is something. I don't know what it is tonight. So have you been up to anything else besides work and worshiping the dead president or what? No, no, no. Okay. Trying, to, trying to get caught up so I can take a vacation. You were leaving it all for the new guy. I know what you were doing. No. I'm gonna leave, I'm, i got to leave him something. Okay. Mr. Mark, what have you been up to? Uh, I Well, I missed last week. I you know, got free tickets to a football game and freezing to death at the football game. Yeah, it was an experience. Snow coming down. It's something I can say I did. I really don't want to do it again. It was cold. And don't want to do. It was cold and wet. Um, fortunately, I came prepared, but you know, all those uh, drunk college kids didn't. But we don't care about them. No. Yeah. So, what have you? If you had any fun experiences, thoughts from behind the gun counter? Um, I've had lots of people asking about. You know, concealed carry stuff, uh, classes, um, had a guy come up and, and uh, said he listens to the podcast and he loves the material we have, uh, loves the way, you know, how, you know, we keep it kind of mellow. We don't get too extreme here. We don't get excited around here. Um, you know, we're not, we don't just have the monotone <laughs> voice, though, you know. Right. We're not, but, we're not, this podcast is anything but boring. You could say that again. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but he listens, and so he came, yeah, and he, no, he, he noticed it. you. He asked you if you were the mark off the podcast. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to wear a name tag at work, so. Do you know his name? I didn't catch it, no. And um, he come and talk to you today? No, it was, jeez, uh, when was that? I don't know, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe? Say hello to him. Oh, yes. Uh, hello, Tuesday, hello. Wednesday, visitor. Yeah, I can't remember God, my day DMV well, Supply but. that yeah. listens to the podcast. That guy. <laughs> no, um, he, and it's good to hear back from people, you know, get a little feedback. Yes. Uh, let people, you know, lets me know that they're listening. I, I enjoy doing this. Um, I know you do. And uh, so anytime we get some feedback, it's good. That's, oh, yeah. That's kind of scary. The feedback? I don't get any feedback. I think they afraid Dude, to come and tell me. Here and you're not working, you don't leave hey, your just, freaking just house. Just pop your mic a little bit. You'll get some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's all bad news, so they don't want to tell me. They're like, actually, oh, you know, we, we can dive right into this. But actually, um, I was looking at our numbers, and we had two podcasts. Um, they weren't back to back. They were like three, you know, a couple weeks apart. That where we actually delved in to the politics a little bit more. So. We talked on the phone, you and me, and you were, we were talking about some stuff. And I was like, let's save this for the podcast. And uh, we've talked about it on the podcast. And oh, then we s- we skipped a podcast. I don't remember the conversation. Then okay. we went to another <laughs> podcast and talked about it again. And those two podcasts were like the highest downloads that we've had. About 15,000, huh? Fi- 18,900. 18, never mind. It's like 80, okay? <laughs> it's like 80. I can't even lie well. <laughs> 
<laughs> you should run for politics if you're skirting the, <laughs> skirting the numbers that much. I mean, well, you know, I, we got to be doing like episode 1258 right now. At least. At since least. we count. Well, 2000. Since so. we started counting or just like. We I, we just kind of randomly count. Oh. I lost track at one. So. Whatever number so, feels yeah. good. Yeah. But anyhow, it was just, it was, it was interesting that, you know, you can track it. Those two, those two podcasts where we hit touched on politics were like the highest downloaded ones ever. So, at, so at the very least people listen and they talk because they must have told their buddy, Hey, they get into politics. I don't know. Maybe it was just very random or maybe the, um, maybe the internet bots have picked up on it. Could have been. <laughs> that's uh, been. what that is. That's the, uh, that's the NSA listening. <laughs> 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 the, oh, you want to talk about us? Huh? The NSA subscribes to our podcast. Crazy how that works. Um, have you had any other thoughts from behind the gun counter at all? I know you're doing two things at once over there. Um, Patriot Defense Nation. I like it. Um, Anyone bought anything cool, man? Shoot. Uh, you know, we're selling a lot lately. Um, yeah, there's, there is a cool shotgun that I don't. I'm not the kind of guy that wants to own it, but I would really like to shoot it. Okay. Um, what is it? It's a Rock Island Armory, which I know doesn't have the best name out there. You're right. They're not the prettiest girl to dance. They do shoot, though. Um, and Or I should say they dance. Um, <laughs> but it's called the VR60. It's a, it's a semi-automatic, kind of, kind of AR-looking one. Yeah. It's really kind of cool looking, you know, for a shotgun. Uh-huh. Um, How much? Four, it's like four thirty, four hundred and thirty dollars. And you sell them quite a few of them. Oh yeah, we're actually out of stock right now. We've just just been really? selling. Do people them. like them just because they look like an they, AR? They look like an AR. Um, they do have changeable chokes and everything, and and, and uh, home, cheap enough if they're crap. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, so like um, a home defense thing. Yeah, you, you could use a home defense. I've I've heard of people even asking if they can use them for hunting. Like, you could. I mean, hmm. call on a coyote close enough. I'm sure you're gonna get it. But. Oh yeah, why not? So well, that's that's pretty interesting. Any uh, sell any fancy guns recently? <sighs> yeah, you have yeah. a lot. As no, is one. Uh, when was that? Yesterday. Oh, what what well, color scheme did you sell? The, the... just a black. Well, God, they're freaking boring. And also, three eighty, which made it even more boring. I don't mm. know. I almost bought that one for sixty dollars. I saw online the other day. Yeah, so this was the high point. You know, um, wow. the skies. Uh, good news, we're we're probably not going to be carrying the skies anymore. Once, Holy once crap! Once we sell out of them, are you kidding me? You're, you're um, not. Well, that... the Taurus G2 pistol has now come out in purple. So, and so you're going to get rid of the skies. I hope to God that we do. Well, there goes the all price? our <laughs> podcast material. Well, the skies and the and the Taurus G2s are priced exactly the same. Oh, gotcha. Um, and you know, you know that's not bad a big... when you look at the Taurus and say that's an upgrade. <laughs> well, you know, the Taurus G2. Is I'll give it credit. It is much better than that sky. I mean, I know you're not a fan of them. I'm, I'm not a fan of the sky though either. So I could see that it would be one that I would probably like put in my truck if it ever disappeared from my truck. I wouldn't be heartbroken. Right. Um. Not my first choice in firearm, but I'd definitely take a Taurus G2 over a, a sky. Okay. Well, there you have it. If you want, uh, you're just going to be discounting out the skies. You're just going to hold uh, on to. Them I think we're just going to wait till they're you know. Pretty Could you really gone. discount those damn things eh, anymore? Really. <laughs> no. So uh, get them while you can. Get them while they're not. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey, um, I posted on our text message thing about the uh, my new gun. The new gun I'm interested in. The, the Lionheart. Lionheart, the LH9N. What do you think about that? Have you seen one of those? Have you handled one? Never. Never even. They've been out for like five years. Probably, but. There might be a reason why nobody sells them. I don't know. I saw some pretty <laughs> good videos. On I'm just pointing that. Why out. do I like all the weird stuff? I don't know. I mean, it's it looks slick. There are there looks are like people power. that kind of collect that, or I shouldn't say collect, but they want that weird, that different. Yeah, they want that different gun that nobody else has. You know, if I can't get my hands on the PD10 pretty soon, I think I'm going to buy a Lionheart Industries firearm. Can you guys order for that it. for me? Do you think? I, I it's not even one of our options i looked for it uh the freak where am i gonna get this i don't know i'll talk to eric at the gun counter he might uh he's got a knack of picking up guns that are hard to find so okay just don't have him pick one up yet no no i'll just uh i'll see if he can 
round one up somewhere. So. I was really set on buying it, and, and I'm going to hold back and just wait a little bit. And then Josh went and compared it to the damn Daewoo pistol. Daewoo makes cars. The Daewoo makes Well, they hand- did. I mean, yeah. like, Daewoo, huh? Daewoo yeah. makes freaking handguns or made handguns. They probably make like... Heavy machinery in Japan or wherever they're from. Korea. <laughs> Korea. I think they're Korea. Yeah, Korean or something. But <laughs> anyhow, whatever. So, uh, so you had a class today. I did have a class today. How did it, that go? It was an enhanced permit class. Um, it went pretty well. It was a, it was a good class. Um, lots of good questions. It's pretty a pretty agreeable class, I guess. So, agreeable uh, is good. Agreeable is very good. <laughs> um, no, they had lots of good questions, and you know they all shot really well. I didn't have anyone that was an absolute one hundred percent beginner, which is fine. They show up, and I have no problem with that. But the shooting portion went went really well. Um, you know, there was, I'm trying to think if there's any odd guns in the group. Really, uh, there was, and there was two Berettas, which doesn't hardly happen. There's a big Beretta ninety two FS. And then there was a Beretta, um, I can't remember what A is AM AMX or AM Oh the APX? APX. Yeah. That's it. And they shot real well. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I mean the class went well. Just an older gentleman there won the hat. Um, yeah. I will say that there was a guy there with his daughter. He took the class because he's already has had his permit. And he took the class with his daughter again just to make her feel comfortable. And she was shooting like a little Ruger three eighty, one of the little stinking tiny ones. And it was just kicking her butt. She probably would have had better luck with the DB9. <laughs> Couldn't um, have been that bad. But it was so little, and it was jumping around so much. And I was going to offer her one of my 9 millimeters, you know, so she could kind of learn on something a little bit bigger. And um, I offered her one, and her dad's like, oh, no, no, she can shoot my gun. And I looked over there, just glanced, and he was shooting a SIG. And I thought, okay, yeah. I was like, has she shot that? Oh, yeah, 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 she shot it before. So I wasn't, I guess, paying attention like I should. And um, she shot the gun almost through the whole class, and I'm just like, I'm looking, and she just she's she's jerking the trigger, she's flinching, and I'm trying to work with her, and I'm wondering what the heck's going on. Come to find out, freaking forty cal, damn, oh, yeah. damn a forty cal, of course, <laughs> piss me off. I tell you what, and uh, she had like ten rounds left, and I told her, Desi, you take this stupid forty cal, and he was, was joking with him the entire class, and I yeah. went and got my um smith and wesson 2.0 nine mil yeah out of my bag and she shot it and she brought everything right up on target i was like see it's that easy <laughs> Sting, but i felt really bad that um uh, i didn't notice that i should have noticed that i would never have let her shoot that stupid 40 cal um so when i was done i felt bad i gave her a hat oh cool <laughs> i just i felt horrible man i was like if I, that was a nine, we could have had you die a hundred rounds with an i could have had you so dialed in oh yeah that 40 yeah. So anyhow, that was my mistake. But I had about, it was about 13, 14 people in class. So it was a good class. It's a good size. I did. Uh, Y'all quick... were outside today? No, shooting inside, okay. buddy. It's a little cold. What? Covered in snow and mud. Um, I will say, though, I don't know if people can recall in the past my, argu- my argument, my fight with, uh, with uh, uh, Legal Heat mm. and trying to kind of... I was trying to get some business from them because they were without a shooting instructor yeah. and they tried to kind of like absorb my business without coming right out and doing it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And um, I pretty much told them, no, they could go pound sand or whatever. Uh-huh. Well, there was three people in my class today that have, that has, they've taken uh, the classroom portion from legal heat and they were so mad. Oh yeah. That there was no, they tried to send them to Idaho falls to do the shooting portion. Wow. And the guy told me, that uh, he goes, man, if we would have just taken your entire class, we would have yeah. saved money. For the classroom portion, they're charging 75 bucks. And then whatever, wow. the shooting portion, probably another 75 Yeah. But um, I thought it was funny um, because I was gonna, they had a class today, and they were going to go. Um, there we go. They, they were going to go and uh, um, I lost my train of my thought now. Legal heat. Legal heat. I was reading that comment, and I got off track. <laughs> they had a class today, and I was going to go stand out there with my business cards because I'm, I'm, like, so dead set on stealing Legal Heat's shooting business as much as I can. I was going to go stand out there and hand their students uh, uh, business cards oh, and yeah. say, just come over, come over, because they won't let me put business cards at Sportsman's Warehouse and stuff. Right, they yeah. just won't let me do that. And But I had a class Who won't today. let you do that? Sportsman's Warehouse. Huh? 
well, let me put my business cards in there because they have a thing worked out with Legal Heat, but nothing says they can't stand outside the store and pass them out. That's true. So anyhow, uh, during class, I my phone dings during a break, and I look at it, and I didn't, I haven't contacted the people yet, but I got an email. Someone says, hey, I took the class today at Legal Heat, and there's a group of us that needs to do our shooting portion. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many people that is. I'm hoping it's the whole freaking class. And um, so I'm going to try to get that. But anyhow, that's my... That's my big deal. That's I'm, horrible anyway. I mean, you can get the whole thing done in one day here. For like a lot less. Yeah. But like 50 bucks less. I, I would pay 50 bucks more if I could do it in one day instead of having two days dedicated to I it. I wish I could charge 50 bucks more <laughs> and get people to pay it. But no, I see what you're saying. It's but they're all getting a, screwed both ways. No, they are. Like more time and more money. They are. They are. So anyhow, my big plan to take take over is slowly coming to fruition. <laughs> super excited about it so other than that um what else we got going on here let me look at my little list that we came up with um, um i tell you what before we get going too far why don't we do something mark why don't we read the hotline where is it at yeah um do you got it i got it okay mark so um yeah we've actually got <laughs> we've got three um wow we're all behind today <laughs> well there's i mean we you added a few more things. Um, yes. So usually uh, we just rattle off the po- podcast hotline and the email. Yeah. Um, we're going to tell you a few more things. Uh, first, let's get the podcast hotline though. It's one two zero eight six nine six four three nine seven. If you comment, uh, you know, questions, anything like that, you can leave them on there. Um, you also email us at patriotdefense13 one three at yahoo dot com. Um, and I'm turning it over to Todd for the website. You info. can find, yeah, I don't have the written down. You can actually take a look at my new website. I'm slowly getting it updated to the way it's all updated and changed, but I, I'm trying to fine tune it a little bit more. Um, you can find the website at Patriot defense one, three.com. That's Patriot defense one, three.com. You can go there, check it out. I've added a calendar to it. Um, right now it's only got the one class that we just did today on it. As soon as I get some other dates updated, I will update the calendar and, and those dates will be on there. It's got a page dedicated to our podcast. So if you don't find them on iTunes or Spotify, you can go directly to that, that page, pull it up. You can listen to the current podcast and all the past podcasts. Um, I have actually started a, started a blog. Oh, I started a blog. I've got one up, and I've actually got another one on my computer, and I will get it. It'll get posted up on, on Monday. I'll send it to my guy, and he'll post it up <laughs> on, on Monday. So I've never, you know, I wasn't a really good student in school by any means, and I and I don't even write normal. If anyone's on Facebook and you see my posts, there's a lot of, like, I post in random thoughts. There's a post, and yeah, I text this way, too. You guys will notice this. I text dot, 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 and then, like, another total random thought, and I pretty much type the way I think. Does that make sense? Are these random thoughts? Or are they very deep? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> well, you do that very kindly. I just make one paragraph and throw it all together. And so <laughs> figure it the, out or don't. But the man. reason why I do this, I don't even worry about spelling or anything because my poor wife, she does medical transcription for a living. And so she has to like listen to doctors. She's got to type all this crap out. She's really fast. She has to put all the punctuation and spelling and you name it in there. And so what I do is I just write some random crap down on my computer and hand it to the computer and go fix it, punctuate, spell, <laughs> make it sound normal. And so she spends like an hour going, Did you, "What are you trying to say here?" <laughs> so she does. She makes all the magic happen, not me. But uh, I add some pictures and I hit send. So I'll have another one up on Monday. <laughs> I do a little hard work. <laughs> so if you were to make a book, it would just be a picture book, basically. I, I'm good coloring. Okay. Pop up. Yeah. Can you believe how much that guy made off that book? What Democrats know? Well, all I don't the, even know all what the pages were blank. I never even heard of it. Yeah. yeah okay, all the pages mind. were blank. Every page in it was blank. It was nothing but a cover. Wow. And it was a gag, and he sold thousands and thousands. That's funny. Thousands. But you know what? My book, when I write it, is going to be a pop up book, and it's going to like pop up high points. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna oh, be man. it's gonna be freaking like the awesome. like the muddy girl colored ones papa pie points that's right <laughs> one one uh, di- different different color scheme for yeah. each page well you gotta make them look better somehow and that's right guess, it's gonna know. be 3d buddy yeah but uh anyhow um so yeah there's a blog on there check it out and eventually i just talked to my gal at the radio station 
and she is going. You to got a whole team, man. I got a whole freaking. You got an team. editor. You got a guy. You got a gal. I do, and I good agree. I, I don't pay the editor. She gets pissed off about that. Now you need a mascot. I I <gasps> pay to defend. <laughs> hmm. Might be in the works. I did actually. I did, and he died. That was Lenny the Duck. Do oh, you, yeah. Lenny's you dead. Ready? Lenny's yeah. dead. Did you kill him? <laughs> no, you killed everything out there. The man. other ducks did. Oh no. <laughs> So well, the you might have did. a new one though, from Newfoundland. Oh, I'm just saying. yes, yes. We'll have to we'll have to work <laughs> on it. But um, eventually, I'm going to get my radio shows funneled to one of the pages on my website, so you can go there. You can get a hold of me. Um, all that stuff. That uh, how come we froze up? I don't know. It's been froze up. So I don't know how the podcast or how the live feed's going. But anyhow, froze up. But you can find everything you want on the website. So that's the boring stuff. What else? Uh, what else we got going on? You here? was talking about your gal. What was up with your gal? My what? radio station. The, the... Oh, she's gonna funnel in the live my live my radio shows. Okay, not the live, but she's gonna to funnel the, in the radio to the shows website? to the website. Hopefully, oh, okay. they're they're working on that. They're trying to see how that's gonna work, and that pisses me off. All Todd, <laughs> all the froze time. Up. Sorry. It's not your I fault. I put a comment on there and it froze up. So twenty four seven tied, huh? Don't don't yeah. Oh, whatever. At least we weren't picking our nose or something. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well end it and kick it back off. See if it'll work. Yeah, but I don't know. Anyway, um, that's too difficult. So <laughs> any so it is what now December. It is December, and you were supposed to get your UTM rounds like in November. Oh I hell! I heard they in the mail. Uh, we, I didn't hear anything. It's the problem. I'm still waiting on that email that no. we talked about a week ago. So I don't know if they're, I'm assuming they're still back ordered. They say they can't get them because I'm not old enough and I live in Idaho. That doesn't make a lick of freaking sense to me. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, I'm still in the running for them. I don't know when I'll get them. I'm going to give them another few days, maybe another week, and then I will send another email. And I actually may have my, I may have my attorney send them an email. And say, hey, what's going on, man? Just give us the give us the scoop. Give us the real deal. If here. it's not legal to have in Idaho, we'd uh, kind of like to know why. Uh, exactly. So maybe I don't eventually, know. I'll get them in and put together some simulation rounds. Uh, you know, sim- Sims classes. Um, been looking forward to those, but uh, yeah, we'll get them sooner or later. We may uh, have to use like rocks and stuff, rocks and <laughs> wrist rockets. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, by the time you send them uh, your Attorney sends them a letter. They're going to say, I'm sorry, we can't do business with you. And they're going to cancel the order because they don't have it. They, they do, just don't I'm have pretty anything. Sh- pretty sure that they don't have they're it. They're juggling every customer that they have with nonsense. And they just don't have the product. Yeah. I'm sure they would like to have it. Oh, but they don't have they it. They probably would. So what else we got? You got a news story over there, don't you, Mr. Tarver? Oh, 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 I got one. Uh, I got a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. So you got a couple. Start with whichever one, whichever one you want. Well, we got the story of the, let's see how they, uh, the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks. Remember that shooting that was there? Uh, one of the officers died. He was a Sergeant Ron. I'm not even going to try your last name, brother. 54 years old. He had 29 years uh, on the... Sorry, I'm scanning, trying to make sure I get everything He was right. the one that was shot, right? If I get it wrong, we'll just make it up later. Huh? Yeah, he he's the one that... He's the officer that died in the conflict. Uh, was hit five times, and come to find out, he was hit by a fellow officer. Friendly uh, fire. Friendly fire. So he went in and... Yeah. Which that doesn't, de- I mean, yeah. that's just information. That doesn't yeah. diminish the no. fact that he was willing to go in there and still, you know, in the line of duty that he died. And that doesn't diminish that at all. No. But what that proves is that when you have a situation like that, Chaotic. especially an active, now did, did I steal your thunder over here? Huh? What? Did I steal your thunder? Did I jump in ahead of you? No. Okay. Just making sure. Um, if you have an active shooter uh, scenario situation, it is going to be chaotic like you said there's going to be people running around everywhere and bad things can happen and we talked about that in my class today uh they're asking me you know would you they're asking me would i go after a a shooter in a mall would i go after a shooter in a theater and i told them no i would not and if they decided to do that that's up to them that's a personal decision but there is an inherent risk that goes along with that. that. You're going to mm-hmm. come across the wrong. Person. You're going to come across the wrong person. Law enforcement's going to shoot you, or possibly another 
concealed carry person will shoot you thinking or an off duty law enforcement off duty law enforcement you may shoot an off duty law enforcement yeah, that's officer what I was saying. yeah mm-hmm. so there is an inherent risk stuff is happening people are screaming running moving bullets are flying there could mm-hmm. be smoke grenades i mean whatever um so you just got to understand that that just because you carry a firearm you know, I praise those people that take matters into their own hands and have stopped things uh, but just because you have a firearm doesn't mean you always need to use the mm-hmm. firearm. Uh, I think if if you're unless you're in imminent danger, you you know should restrain yourself as much as possible. I right. believe you should hunker down and wait till the fight comes to you. Yeah, and that's when you defend yourself. And these guys weren't rookies. This was you know they wasn't the first time out there. The he was getting ready to retire, wasn't he? He had 29 years. He was retiring the next year. The officer who Shot him had nine years. I mean, he he wasn't right. he wasn't a new fresh fish. He he'd been around a little while. He'd been in some you know different actions. I'm sure out well, there. And I'm it's sure a, I'm sure he felt a small hick town. You know, he, I'm sure he wasn't intending to do that, and I'm sure he feels horrible for that. So. Oh man, that's that's one of the one of the problems I have. Whenever people were, we had this debate about putting guns in. Uh, bringing firearms into schools and i'm like i think it's a great idea and they asked me would you do it i said no (laughs) (laughs) if i've missed if i did the wrong thing if nobody else did it yes i would do it uh but man that that would that would end my life so let's let's i mean if i uh, could you live with that oh well let's talk about that i mean i we've touched on it before and i don't know what's going on with facebook live but whatever just let it roll at this point Um, discriminating against us yeah, there's something. They probably saw the. They probably yeah. Uh, it's when I mentioned NSA. You got to vote um, a copyright flag. <laughs> but, but anyhow, uh, you know, arming teachers, arming teachers at school, I, I definitely think that they should do it. If teachers want to be armed, I think they should allow it. Yes. But I don't think that teachers should be necessarily hunting down the active shooter. No. They need to stay with their students. They need to to draw their firearm and have it ready as they barricade themselves in the classroom. But they are ready. They are prepared. They have something to fight with if they absolutely need to. If that shooter gets into their room, they can defend themselves. They can defend their students, but they shouldn't run around in the hallways because that's just mass confusion. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that brings up, there's another story we didn't even have out here. And I think it was, I don't know, it, was, God, it had to be California somewhere. There was some college down there where they actually armed the teachers with hockey pucks. Hockey pucks. Okay, hockey pucks. Um, Not even know, the sticks, the pucks. The pucks. But let's, let, let's I know it's, it's funny, right? Great. First, no, it's first reaction People is... People running funny. around with their teeth missing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first reaction is, ha, 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 hockey pucks. That's stupid. Get a fire. Well, they're not going to go with firearms, obviously. Maybe not yet. So they, But you know oh, what? No, this is what I'm going to say. They are saying, hockey pucks are silly, yes. But they are saying, here's a hockey puck. Throw it at them. Whatever. You know what they're encouraging? They're encouraging the, the fight. They're encouraging oh, yeah. fight back. Yeah. Do not barricade yourself in a closet with a pathetic weapon. But yes, but they are. It's a it's a step. It's a step in the right direction. They'll never get it right. It is, but if the guy's got a gun and right. they throw a, sh- a hockey puck at him, they're just gonna piss him off, and then he's just gonna. Ro- <laughs> well, he's open already. Fire he's on already. He probably he's didn't already see you, off. and then you got yeah. beamed in the side of the head he's with a, a hockey puck. <laughs> he's already pissed off. He's <laughs> already in there shooting. But I mean, he turns to engage. Come on, you. Wayne Gretzky. Let's get this done. <laughs> I knew that I knew this is what I was going to get from you guys. But I look I look at it as I don't I don't appreciate the tool that they've given them, but it's 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 better than it's it's a fight. Okay, it's not lock yourself in the closet and wait to die. Now if you hit him with three hockey pucks, is that a hat trick? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Yeah, and you get a you get bonus point for that. Okay. All right. But anyhow, well that you guys screwed that story up for me. <laughs> Well, I understand. I understand where you're going at. That at least they're saying something. Uh, an aggressive move has to be taken. It's a step in the right direction. It's far. Cry but it's from California. Where, it's a far cry from where it was. Yeah, but it's California. But it's a far cry from where it was. I'm surprised they didn't give them Harry Potter wands and 
<laughs> well, no, that one in Pennsylvania gave him little miniature baseball bats. I don't remember yeah. that one we talked <laughs> about. Little tiny yeah. Ones. yeah. But that's still, I don't applaud that, but I applaud the <laughs> thinking behind. Right, no, yeah. It's you guys not, not going to change my mind. I mean, it's horrible because this ain't a laughing matter. It's, but, 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 I mean, I can see some old teacher putting knots on this guy's head with his little baseball. Jason is on the hall who with a ruler. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Give me your knuckles. I'm going to wrap them. That's it. You're cleaning all the chalkboards. Oh. They even use chalkboards anymore? I don't, I'm not in school, dude. I no, don't that's know. That's true. Okay. So, anyhow, whatever. Make fun of me. I think it's it's not necessarily a good thing, but it ain't a bad thing either. I don't know what it is. At least California, I don't expect them to get, get it right. Uh, we One of the other stories we got is uh, California just got into session. Uh, they just got um, a supermajority in the state Congress, and they got their – Governor Gavin Newsom, and they just introduced three new bills to just put more weight on gun owners. I mean, they're not they're they're not going to take the step that needs to be taken and go ahead and arm people. Instead, they're going to give you hockey pucks. They're going <laughs> to give you a hockey puck or a tiny baseball bat. I mean, come on, good grief, man! So, what are some of the things that they're doing? They are implementing a farm excise tax, which. The story is a little short on exactly how much that's going to be. A gun violence restraining order, which appears like the red flag, pretty much the same thing. Uh, oh, the red flag where if someone says that you're scary, they can come take your gun. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Basically, in California, they, all they need is don't to say, piss this off your neighbor. Don't you, piss you off your neighbor. You think there would already be something in the, a law saying that you shouldn't, you know, gun violence is illegal? Pretty sure that it's probably a law. They should just outlaw murder. I don't know. Oh yeah, another law that nobody that criminals won't follow. <laughs> there you go. But it's is pretty much a red flag. But it would authorize an employer, a coworker, or an employee of a secondary or post secondary school that the person has attended in the last six months to file a petition. <laughs> wow. So you don't even have to be like currently at. No, you, if you, you knew you this person in there. the last yeah, six months, you can file it. Wow. And uh, you can renew it yearly. And So you could irritate someone with a Facebook post. And yeah. they got you. Oh, and yeah. they got you. Speaking of that. What's that? Is it New York where they're trying to go back and like look at all your social media and stuff? Uh, I think so. That's I something like that. don't remember where that was. I even posted that. I don't you, remember where Yeah, you're from. the original postee, poster. I've been busy, man. been busy. Yeah, it was, uh, they want to. Where was that at? Was that Florida? They're wanting to go back, I don't and know. there's a bill introduced. Uh, and if you can scroll through it, you can see it real quick. Uh, where they want to judge all your internet postings, all your social media before you're allowed to purchase firearms. Yeah, goodness gracious, I I would be. Oh, we did. We did this podcast. There's well, no way. My Facebook page is just full of likes on all anything gun related. Well, so they could look at that and just no, be like, "Oh no. man, this guy's going to be a serial killer." Oh, no, you're an extremist. <laughs> you're a you're a vile extremist because I like all to shoot guns. All you got to do is call a boy a girl <laughs> into paper or a boy a boy, and you're done. Yeah, you're done, man. Yeah. Oh, well. what was it? Uh, I, I saw. I don't know if it was one of you guys that sent it, but in Har- at Harvard. Um, this girl was renting a room or something, and her roommates, me. her roommates, yeah, yeah, kicked yeah. her, she kicked her even, out. She was going because she had yeah. guns. She wasn't even at the school. She was going to the school, but I think the room that she was renting was in a building that wasn't even involved with right. the school. But she had some firearms, some legally owned firearms. Yeah, and she had like two roommates, two or three roommates. I don't know how many, and they saw her hat. She had oh, a yeah, Make that, America Great Again hat, right. and that tipped them off. And so when she was gone, they went through her stuff and yep. found her firearms. And now in her room, in yeah. her room, her privacy, yeah, yeah. And so they got a hold of their landlord, and now the landlord uh, and those her roommates want her kicked out. They're kicking yeah. her out. They kicked her out, and now they want her to pay back rent or something like that. <clears throat> pay, pay. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, restitution. Yeah. I thought everybody was scared of gun owners. I thought gun owners were crazy people that were ready to flip out and shoot everybody. They're making an awful lot of demands on this person. Yeah, yeah they are. That's true, boy. So, uh, 
Yeah. I don't see. Anyway. Maybe they know it's all nonsense they're talking and something. That happened in Harvard, (laughs) and I'm surprised it didn't happen in California. I'm just, you know, (laughs) at their going rate. Okay. So I've got the next article. I don't know why I'm holding it up. It's not like the camera's working. Um, The next article I got is I labeled uh, Don't Be an Idiot. That's always a good good thing to this. It's a good way to live your life. Yeah. Is to, to not be an idiot. So, it's hard to live up to, though. Well, it definitely helps. It does. So, it is law, okay, at least in the state of Idaho. Like, you can't carry, first of all, in our airports, in any airport, you cannot carry past the TSA security checkpoint, okay? You shouldn't take guns. If you're going to fly with a firearm, it needs to be checked in properly in the right case you got to check it in you got to declare it it can't fly with you it'll fly in your checked luggage okay there's an article that came out three people in the last week in the boise airport boise idaho airport got caught with a handgun in their luggage trying to get it through the tsa checkpoints idiots you just donated your handgun you just donate yeah you just don't i've donated mm-hmm. a pocket knife there once <laughs> but uh, I didn't realize. Well, whatever. They they supposedly maybe they didn't realize that their firearm was it was in there. I don't know. But uh, not only did that blow my mind, and every time that happens up there, I roll my eyes. That is three in the last week. Twenty two guns this year in the Boise airport. Uh, people tried to get through the security a uh, security checkpoint. Can't see any video, but people are joining still. That's I, awesome. I'd be. I'm curious to know if they can Maybe see they us. Maybe they can. Hey, Wesley, if you just joined, anyone watching, can you see us? Are we moving or is the screen froze up? Okay, back to our, <laughs> yeah. back to our current so, story. So, Boise, I mean, uh, this is America. Yeah, I get it. But, you know, TSA, they have a set list of things you can and can't take on the airplane. When they, they tell stop you, you for exactly, shampoo? Yeah. Well, yeah. You and, think a firearm, they're going to do yeah. <laughs> So they had to put this reminder in. Says uh, firearms, ammunition, firearm parts, and realistic replicas of firearms are always prohibited in carry on baggage. However, these items can be transported in checked baggage if the traveler declares them to an airline during the ticket counter check in process. There is a process. Deal with the process, obey the law. You don't want to get caught with one of these. It says, and check it before you get there. You need a lock gun case. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to check with TSA. To, they yeah. will they will tell you what cases you need to use, what you need to do with your ammo. I've Where never to flown go, with a firearm. Do it. They do it. They give you everything you need. Yeah. Have you ever flown with one? No. But my <clears throat> right. buddy, my buddy's you know flown to Alaska, and obviously right. in Alaska he wanted to take his gun with him. So okay. So it says right here it says uh, any passenger who brings a firearm to the TSA security checkpoint faces a civil penalty that ranges anywhere from. Uh, $1,900 to $9,800. Really? Is it worth it? Break and you lose your handgun. Guess you just and you lose your handgun. Went into debt. <laughs> now, this is the federal government. You should have seen some Pop-Tarts that were chewed out into a gun shape. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Something. <laughs> I mean, they got they got to they gotta have their reason for existence some kind of way. I went into... Nobody and, pointed a finger. Like a <laughs> yeah, <gun>. exactly. <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, me and me and Kevin work, work for the same place. I don't think you're with me that year. You like to get out of those freaking meetings. Yeah. yeah. No comment. <laughs> no comment. So there's regional meetings that we have to go through like every other year. Or some <laughs> crap. Yeah. <laughs> yuck. Anyhow, I'd spent it was a Sunday. We were flying out on a Sunday. I'd spent Saturday in a class teaching a class. I was on an indoor gun range, which is just as much as you turn on the uh, uh, the fans, ventilation. the ventilation fans. It is just Full, just full of of, of gunpowder residue floating <laughs> around in there. Beautiful, and uh, it's great, man. And uh, I was wearing my sweatshirt, sweatshirt I always wear, the hoodie. And on the Sunday, I put that same hoodie on. I made sure my bags were empty, and we headed up to Boise to get on the plane. And I happened to be the one that they decided they were going to pull out a line and swab his hands. Nice. What? Okay. Yeah, they swab hands, looking for, like, gunpowder residue or bomb-making material. I didn't know that. Holy cow. Yep. And so I made it through, but I'm walking up there going, oh, Maybe it wasn't so random. Yeah. <laughs> I, I made it through, but I'm walking up there thinking, uh, 
aisle, whatever, just swab my fingers. And that dawned on me. The lady grabs me and she's like, she starts swabbing and she gets a little close to my. I'm like, oh shit, we're in big trouble because I know I'm just covered. It's the same sweatshirt, same hoodie I've been wearing for the last three weeks and uh-huh. every class that I've. She didn't touch it with those little swabs or it would have come back. I guarantee it would have wow. come back. She just hit my hands between my fingers and we were good to go. But I was pretty freaking nervous. She so tell me you were coated with gunpowder. That's I was coated that's kinda, with gunpowder. And I mean, they swabbed you and you're good. But I'm good. But that's a little didn't. ridiculous though. I mean, if it did come back with gunpowder residue, you're not allowed to shoot a gun in America. They probably would have like freaking like, they probably would have taken me in the back room and you know oh, yeah. bend over full and cavity search. Cough. You, you know, would have been detained. Yep. A little gravel for traction, and we're good to go, buddy. I need to know if you get detained from that, because if I can put a little gunpowder on my hand and skip a meeting, <laughs> I mean, I can explain it later. Well, <laughs> you could try. I'll go up here. I'll be shoveling my hands I've, in it in the park. If you do, if you do that, would you do me a favor? Would you record it for the podcast? I've I've heard of some. They're good probably excuses. not going to let me continue once <laughs> once I. That's a that's a doozy. That's a good excuse right there. It is. So anyhow, don't be an idiot. Don't try to fly with your weapons. I mean, it's it's touchy of of touchy of a enough subject that there was a woman who was traveling, and I don't know her flight got delayed or something, and her baggage got lost or something. Um, and her gun that she was traveling with ended up going to New York. Oh, man. And she got nailed for it, even though she wasn't in New York. Her gun went somewhere, landed somewhere where it wasn't supposed to, and she got nailed for it. Was this a declared gun? I think so, yes. Oh, that's not right. Madness. So that's, that's why I don't go. She to has New no York. control over that. Straight up craziness. Yeah. Just don't, just don't leave your house. I don't leave my house. I work. I do the podcast. I stay, you know. Could go to CrossFit. Same thing in New Jersey, man. Yeah. That's why people want Chris Christie to be something. Man, keep that clown away from any kind of power. Garbage. Oh, yeah. That's ridiculous. So they flew her gun that she declared to New York, and she got charged with it. Yep. Well, come get me. Because it (laughs) it touched down. Unbelievable. No, not really. Not anymore. So what do you got over there for a story, Mr. Mark? Um, So um, here's the thing. Private gun sales have been legal in America since 1791, the year they ratified the Second Amendment. And ironically, any ban on private sales would not have stopped a single mass shooting, you know, um, because everybody supposedly buys their guns via background check. Right. So uh, here's what's going on. California again. Um one of the Democrats there, Mike Thompson, um, he got with the groups, you know, the, the Brady campaign uh, for gun violence, the uh, every town for gun safety. All the big, all the, all the big, all the big hitters, the Gabby Gifford group, you know, all the those Soros ones. and Bloomberg. Um, yeah, pretty much. He asked them what they wanted and they all said they wanted a bill to criminalize private gun sales. And um, so now he's sponsoring legislation. Um, requiring people to get a background check to sell a gun to their friend, like their best friend who they probably have very good knowledge that he was never a felon or, you know, not allowed to own a firearm. Right. Probably been to a gun store before with him to buy a gun, but no, now you gotta. And it even extends to loaning to people. So like if I had a gun and I wanted to like, give it to my child, pass it down to my kid. Yeah. It was his grandpa's gun or whatever. They would have to do a background check on mm-hmm. those as well. Yeah. So all this is is a big disguise for eventually getting right. national gun national registration. Gun registration. Yep. So Accounting for which is pretty file. much what Hawaii does anyway. Right. So the way you look at this is, you know what, Trump is in Trump is in power right now, okay? Trump is the president. And everyone, and we talked about it before on the show, everyone sits back and they think, oh, we're good to go. We got this guy in there and, and, and everything's good to go. Well, you know what? They're still building the freaking machine. Behind. Yeah. Don't look behind the curtain. They're still building it. Full speed. And in a couple years, if they take control, say we have, they have control of the what right now? The house or this? The house. The house. So if they get the Senate in two years, this, this is all the framework, man. This is all the framework. This is, this is here. This is already... Ready to go, ready to push through. Right. Well, they're so frightened of that. They what their their favorite mode is going through. Give them, let them take back the White House and everything else, 
And uh, like I said, they ramped this up so much. We've never seen stealing like this. These guys are stealing every election, moving. It's incredible. Let them get back in control of the ATF. See what gets outlawed. Man, they're going to just oh, regulations. And yeah. it's, it's not going to be something you can vote on. It's going to be a governmental regulation. Right, right. So what we're, saying, what we're saying, and we don't want to be the key behind this, what we're saying is buy your guns and ammo now. Right now. Right now. Just tell me when you're going to start so I can get to it before you do. Great. <laughs> Mark's I'm going like, to have people be, lined up at the door now. It's going to be freaking busy at work now. Um, no, I just I think it's horrible that it's it's not going to stop a single mass shooting. You know, if somebody's right. going to, or, or anything. For instance, if if somebody wanted to kill a bunch of kids at a high school, fellow students or whatever, I don't want to give any ideas, but they could do the same thing by driving their car through the parking lot when school gets out. Oh, yeah. You know, outlawing guns is not going to hurt that person at all. It's going to hurt the the grandfather who wants to give his shotgun to his grandson. Well, and, and I mean, the the criminals don't get the guns legally now. And they, well, they don't really get them legally now. Anyhow, they, no. you, they typically steal them. Yeah. Yeah. Stolen firearm. And so, you know. Which you is illegal. Are they going to require a background check if you want to steal a firearm? They'll probably help oh, yeah. hold you responsible because it was taken from your possession. Yeah, go yeah. figure. But, oh, like Washington State now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, they could make a law just to get rid of all guns. And then the bad guys can't get them because, as you know, heroin is illegal. And we don't have heroin problems. Exactly. That's so, right. No. Nothing comes in from other countries. We can't print shit off of a printer anymore either. <laughs> nope. So. Well, they getting shipments of this. I mean, tons and tons. You think some guns ain't gonna come in? Yeah. You're exactly. never gonna. You're never gonna take the, the guns from the bad guys. Haven't you ever seen that movie, Lord of War? I did see that. Movie. I love that freaking movie. <laughs> so, anyhow, they're always trying to do something. Is that all our some new stories, nonsense. guys? I think that's all our news stories. I think that's yeah. it. It's, it's not too much happening. It had the president die. That was all that was on the news this week. God rest his soul. I don't know how to do that. I'm not Catholic. Okay. Well, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad. I kind of like. I kind of liked 41. He was gave a lot of service to this country. So. Oh yeah. So, um, just a little, just a little thing I want to throw out there. Um, it's it's what my current blog post is about. Okay. But uh, what it is, is 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 practice with your firearm, okay? Everyone says, you know, that you, you grow up hearing that thing, you know, uh, it's like riding a bike. It'll Sure, you can ride a bike, you can wait 20 years, and you can go back and ride a bike. Are you still going to be able to ride the bike? Yes, kind of. Uh, but it's going to be difficult. There's going to be things that you're going to have to relearn. Hop, I know. Can you hop up on a curb? I freaking tried. There you go. Yeah. So uh, a firearm, okay, you can learn how to shoot a firearm. You can pick up a firearm. Not pick up a firearm for 10 years, pick it up, and sure, you can pull the trigger and it'll go bang. And you might remember sight picture and you might remember grip and stance, but your muscle memory is going to be gone. It's going to feel weird. You're not going to know how to remember how to, how to you know, manage the recoil, manage the, the sight picture, that kind of stuff. You've got to practice. I know people that take their permit class, literally take their permit class. They shoot their 98 rounds, and they carry that dang gun every single day, which is great, but they never fire the thing for, like, years and years and years. If you are counting on that firearm to to protect you and, and your family, you've got to know how that thing works. you got to clean the lint out of it sometimes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I mean, you've got to know that thing works. You've got to have that muscle memory there because it will degrade over time. I don't care if that's calling up me. I don't care if that's calling up someone else and actually taking a training class. You need to go out and shoot five rounds, 10 rounds, 15 rounds, whatever it might be. If it's one round, God bless your soul, do one round if that's all you can afford. But as better than nothing. You need to know that gun is going to function, and you need to know how to use it properly and be efficient with it. Dry fire. Well, you will start losing it. First, also, is to find motor movements like the trigger pull. Yep. And when something does go down and you panic and freak out and start getting your tunnel vision and all this other stuff, you don't want to lose <laughs> Well, your muscle memory is not going to be there, so you won't know where to go. Yeah. And that's why you train and practice and you shoot and you, you, you do these things. You overdo these things. You do them a lot and a lot and a lot. Because when you are under stress and there's stuff that you can't do with the fine muscle movements, you freeze up a little bit, this or that, you are going to get some of that because some of it's going to be natural 
you know, natural uh, muscle movements that you've trained, mm -hmm. you know, muscle memory that you train that's there. You're going to know how to draw that firearm. I'm, why am I drawing left-handed? Because your right hand was full. Because you got a knife in your right hand. <laughs> Voda. So, <laughs> you, so you, your, your muscle memory is going to be there. You're not going to have to think about it. You're going to pull that arm out of the way. You're going to get off the X. You're going to move. You're going to draw the firearm at the same time, and you're going to make your shot. You're going to take your shot. If you haven't done that in years, that doesn't just you're gonna freeze. come back to you. You're going to stand there. That's why people see a car coming and freak out and just stand there and get hit. <laughs> Come hit me. <laughs> Come hit me, bro. <laughs> but uh, that's just my, I guess that's my, that's my thoughts. That's my, my thought of the day. Go out and practice. Go out and train. Go out and, and shoot. It's funny because I have, I'm not picking on these guys at all. I'm just, I'm going to, I'm picking on the guys that have, like the most training, the most firearms experience. I see uh, guys that come and say, I was law enforcement for 32 years, but I haven't shot in the last nine. Okay. And they, they will tell you how good they are. Well, they're telling you how good they were. If you haven't shot, I don't care if you carried a gun every day for your life, but if it's been five, six, seven, even two, two years since you've shot, you have, that is degraded. You have lost some of that. You have to, mm -hmm. Develop it, and you got to keep it honed. I, it's just absolutely important that you do that. I, I can't even stress it enough. I see it in my class every time I do one. A lot of guys don't go to the range anyway, even when they're active duty. They just, yeah. yeah. Well, some people are gun guys. Some people aren't. I mean, that's just what that boils down to to a certain extent. So practice, practice, practice. Oh, and I got another question for you guys. I saw it today on some old timers. I see some old timers do some of these. They shoot. And what's this? And I'm going to try to demonstrate it the best I can. You're good at describing what I do um, for the podcast. I hear you do it all the time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when they shoot, they when they, they pull the trigger, the recoil, it launches their gun up and they come back down and they shoot again. You know what I'm talking about? So you're talking like fishing kind of thing? Yeah, but it's like, bam, bam. What in the hell are they shooting? I don't yeah, know. Lord. I've seen old timers do this. It's insane. Well, I... I'm, why, okay. is, why do they do that? Why do they I, teach that? I like to say it's a controlled recoil, but that is extreme. Um, that is extreme. And you actually, you're going to, you are going to force a malfunction yeah, doing that. Absolutely. And um, you're pointing the gun at the sky, which so makes me nervous. I, I'll tell people... You know the gun's going to kick. You know it's going to go bang and all that stuff. You want to control it, but you want to let it happen at the same time. I know it's weird, but it's a it's a controlled energy, you know. Right. But you got to keep your arms stiff. Yeah. I can bet you they practice gaining the sight picture by coming down on it like and that. And that's bad. Yeah, but that's I, bad I, because I you're going to swing happened. right past your target. That, my friend, is why you draw and you come straight out straight with your line. Out. Straight out with your line of sight. That's fishing. This yeah. is freaking bowling. Ask them, and I I bet you they. That's how they get in their sight picture. And then they yeah they go yep. right right past their sight, past it, and then right they got to come back target. up and find it again. Yep. Guaranteed. Another thing. Another thing. And we're gonna we're gonna hit we on go. this. We're gonna hit Here on we this. Here we go, folks. We're gonna hit on this too. So when you are picking up your firearm to shoot it if you are right-handed please pick up your firearm with your right hand you'll have them like on the table on yeah. the bench whatever quit switching hands yes yeah i know right where you're going with that unneeded manipulation over manipulation of the firearm that is very unneeded mm -hmm. is a bad thing yeah cuz you're just going to have a you know you, negligent discharge or you, uh, you're increasing your chance for yeah. a negligent discharge or an nd yeah. so your firearm's laying on the table. Your loader magazine is next to it. You pick it up in your right hand, in the firing grip, with the finger up to you. Roll it over with your left hand. You pick up the. And I'm not pointing this fake gun at you. I promise. You, I, it happens all the time. I know, long, but so. it's it's a fake one. I promise. And the safety's even on. Look at. Look Ow! at the safety's on. <laughs> and then you, you pick up the mag. <laughs> you, you, pick up, <laughs> you pick up the magazine. What if this safety's hand. on? <laughs> you enter. You you insert that into the into the gun, and then you just roll it up, and you're ready to shoot. Yeah. A lot of people will go over. They aren't even left-handed. They will pick it up in their left hand. They will put the magazine in with their right hand. They will then like like rack the slide with their yeah, right that's hand. That's awkward. And then they hand it, they do turn this. It, turn it over to the... Yeah. And they don't know how to do it. And they're like... Do they toss it from one hand to the other? I've kind of seen that a little bit. 
Actually, it's scary. It's it's um, and they pass the gun to the right hand and shoot and and I, you're I just not sh- recognizing their skills. Now, now here's man. the thing: like I see <laughs> people like do that. <laughs> they do that all the time at the gun counter. And you know, yes, I am trying to make a sale. <laughs> it's annoying to me when they do that. I want to tell them stop doing that, but I don't want to be mean about it, you know. You're right. And I'm just like, oh man, you just know? give him my business card and send him to me. I I'm, I will yeah. take care of I'm it. I'm just like, ugh. So you and, need and to this me, guy. <laughs> to me, it's weird to see people do that. I'm like, why? Why would you think that's easier? I think they do it because this is the right. If they're right handed, it's their strong hand, right? And so they want to do everything with their. So here's how I combat that at the gun counter is that don't make no. I sense. say. I say, okay, are you right or left-handed? And they say right-handed. I'm like, okay, so uh, you, what you want to do is you want to hold the gun like you're going to be shooting it, you know, in your strong right. hand, your right hand. Right. I'm like, and then everything else you do with your left hand. <clears throat> and if you want to, you know, because they always think that, I don't know why, new people to the firearm, especially semi-autos, they think that you have to manipulate that slide every time. Right. And so they're so keen, they're so focused on that, manipulation of the slide right and i just you know you kind of have to remind them look you only have to manipulate that slide one time oh yeah i've seen them rack it yeah go up to like they're gonna pull the trigger and then like rack it again (laughs) what are you doing yeah i'm just like no 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 so let's 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 hit this let's let's go down this road for another minute and then we will sit our hour and we'll be done this irritates me too there's a little button on the side of your firearm Okay, a lot of people refer to it as the slide release. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It is not the slide release. It's that, my friend, is a stop. slide stop. Yes. Yes, if you put pressure on it and you pull it down, Depending you can, on you. You can, yeah, you can release the slide and, and, and cause the slide to go forward and chamber around. You can't even do that with a new shield. Well, Don't even try it. Okay. Because you're, it's because you're not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I know. But I'm okay. That is to lock the slide back on empty or lock it back mm-hmm. for uh, other things. You need to get used to racking the slide with your hand. Mm-hmm. Tap and rack. Tap, tap and, and rack. rack. So Learn you, how to do you it. Tap the magazine. The new magazine. You tap it in. Tap rack. Reach over rack. Bang. It's tap and rack. And so you want to do that because that's how you clear a jam. You need to get used to running that slide. Yes. That's how you manually force that gun to do something okay so you've got to get used to doing that don't go for that button it is a slide stop not a slide release now how many people have you seen and i've seen this where they work the slide and they ease <laughs> every oh, freaking man. class okay there is a spring oh. we're going we're going down the all the pet peeve list today <laughs> so there is a spring in there a slide spring in your firearm it is meant to do a job you're your firearm is meant to take some abuse. It's tough. It is tough, unless you're shooting like a Kimber. <laughs> but they are meant to take some abuse. And you need to pull the slide back. And instead of pulling it back and then holding onto the slide and easing it forward slowly, which is just going to elicit a jam, yeah. a malfunction of sorts, yeah. you need to rack that Out slide back. Out of battery, back. Yes. failure to feed. Yeah. Any of those. You need to pull that slide back, and you need to just take your hand all the way as far as it will go, Really quick, take your hand, slide it off the slide. Let that slide slingshot forward under the power of the recoil spring. Just let just it do its let, work. Let it go. Let it let it do its work. It's it, it won't break. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> unless your takedown. If it does, you want to know. Unless right your takedown there. levers flipped, <clears throat> and then, then it's gonna you fight. Just let go. It's gonna whew, fly right off. <laughs> That's the, right. Right off the frame. That's why we don't mess with any of these buttons right. on exactly. the side of our guns. We. Uh, we just run the slide. So anyhow, that's my uh, that's my deal. So thought for, thought for the day. Thought for the thoughts for the day that I've had to correct in class today. So <laughs> really quick, final thoughts, Mister Mark. Um, I'm gonna make this quick. I gotta pee. So <laughs> <laughs> I got. That's pee. all I'm thinking right now. Okay. Final <laughs> thoughts, Mister Tarver. The left is making moves. The gun grabbers are making moves. They are closing in on us, and we're sitting here fat and happy and not doing a thing about it. They're closing in on us. we got to start making moves. we got to start calling people. Congressmen are crap, but they do respond to some phone calls. They don't respond to tweets. They don't respond to emails. Tie their phone lines up, and they'll respond to stuff like that. That it? That's it, yeah. 
I got one final thought, and it happens to be the title of the paper I read today. Don't be an idiot. See you guys next week. Okay, I'll second that one.